Hey, it's Mike, your host of Crushing Your Fear. How's that fear doing today? We have fear all around us, especially these days with the media and all these this, these outside forces scaring the hell out of us. But So I have these great guests on that, that, that talk about their fear, and um, we have a great guest today. It's uh, Max Naist, and he is an author, speaker. He wrote the uh, Fearless Happiness book, and he has a group, and he's trying to help people out. So uh, Max, thanks for coming on. Hey, Michael, thank you for having having me. Uh, it's an honor for me to be asked to speak on my book and, and to come on being a guest as a uh, being a guest on a podcast. So thank you so much. No, I appreciate Glad you coming here. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on. I was trying to pronounce your last name because it's N-J-I-S-S-T. I'm like, well, it's Max N-I- Gist and N-J-I-S-T, right? No, N-I-J-S-T. Oh, N-I-J-S-T. All right. What did I say? Yeah, that's even makes well, it. Well, that's more even mess. worse. So, but it, <laughs> it just or nist, but nace, it's naced, yeah, naced. But yes, that's sir. Dutch. And uh, we were talking about the, uh, you know, I was I spent some time in Rotterdam. I was doing some work there, and uh, the Indonesian food was fantastic. And you're you're part like Dutch Indonesian. Correct. Yeah. Awesome. 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 So listen, uh, I'm glad to have you on. I know you're doing some good stuff with the Fearless Happiness uh, Movement. Maybe go uh, go into that a little bit. Like, how did that come about? And you know, you wrote a book about it, so there's a lot of a lot of stuff behind that. Uh, give us some ideas. All right, so I'm gonna go back to like way back. You know, I, I've been clean and sober for about well, not for about for over 18 years now, and wow. it's it's been a quite a journey, right? Um, so about 10 years ago, I met this gentleman, which you both and I both you and I know. Uh, Chris Whitehead. Um, okay. And I always talked about writing a book and, you know, he was going through some struggles at that time. And I was the great procrastinator and, you know, we managed to get together and put together this outline for a book, right? Cause I wanted to share my story from addiction to recovery and what that looked like and how people can overcome any challenge, right? It's not just for people who suffer from addiction, but it could be anxiety, depression, Uh, trauma, like PTSD or whatever, right? I wanted to reach as many people around the globe as I could. And so we put that together, right? And like I said, for about five years, seven years, I was the great procrastinator. You know, I'd always tell me, yeah, we'll get this started, blah, 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 blah. So what happened was, and I'll share with the audience. So it took a tragedy in my life for me to get off my butt and finally take some action, right? So about five years ago, um, just after I turned, uh, I believe it was 13 years sober, um, my sister would pass away of Parkinson's disease, right? Which as a family, all of us, you know, she had suffered for so long. That wasn't the tragedy, right? But what then what would happen, um, you know, at, I was with my ex fiance at the time. We were getting ready to move to Minnesota, happened to be in Denver, Colorado on our one of our stops at a Denny's and I get the call that my brother had committed suicide and hung oh. himself and lost his battle to addiction. Um, wow. So, you know, knowing Chris as long as I had at the time, you know, there was one person I called first that was my sponsor and Chris was the second man I called, you know what I mean? And because um, I just, I was in this state of shock, right? You know, because my brother was two years younger than me and we had actually kind of gotten sober together about the same time. He had like a year less or two years less than I did. But we went from brothers who hated each other because we were using and, you know, in and out of jail. And he went to prison to couldn't stand each other to when we got sober, we became very close again. And uh, so that happened. And then six months later, my mom would pass away. Oh, uh, on Thanksgiving Day. So this day, this past Thanksgiving, this past 24th of November was the five year anniversary of my mom's passing. Right. Literally of a broken heart because he had just lost two children. Like, oh, that's terrible. And uh, so I began the process of putting the book together and the fearless happiness. Right. Because you saw how I put the why in happiness. Right. So I was uh, Chris talks about his his best friend and and business partner, Lonnie Robinson, a lot. Right. And he was a very good friend of mine. Also, he was a coach and mentor of mine. And also a very good friend. Uh, One day we were thinking of the title and I just, it came out of my mouth, right? Like fearless happiness. 
right? Because I was thinking of my journey actually at the time, because I got to tell you, Michael, when I first got sober, <clears throat> you know, I ran the streets. I was looking at a three-year prison term, all that stuff that goes along with it, right? But when I got sober, you want to talk about being in fear. Like I had no idea what recovery was. I didn't have any idea what AA or NA or any of those AAs were, you know what I mean? At, let alone being sober and um, doing life, as they say, on life's terms without any drugs or whatever. So, and then I thought about happiness, what made me happy. And, you know, when I, as I did the work to stay sober, one thing my sponsor, my, my mentor, and a lot of my mentors taught me that was nothing outside of me is going to make me happy. Nothing right. That, that I would have to find the things that make me happy. So that's why I put the why in the happiness. And, you know, it's been a journey. I got the book out, probably released the book. Um, I believe it was the right after my mom had passed away and uh, got the book out two years ago. And, you know, I started this, this movement of helping people around the world find their fearless happiness. And what I mean by that, because we know that fear are we ever really going to be fearless? Probably not, right? Because there's always something that's going to scare us a little bit, maybe even a lot. But it's entrusting that process and doing those things we don't like to do anyway, or facing our fears and doing it and doing the things right to to get things done, right? And, and then the happiness, you know, because um, my belief is happiness is fleeting, right? Like we can be happy one moment, and next minute we could be mad because some guy cut us off on the freeway. But that, that why in there, when I mean happiness, is when you find that happiness that really brings you joy, joy is, 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 is what is really lasting if you think about it, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's, um, you know, having grandkids, you know, for me, it's being married to my wife, she, you know, she's my best friend, she supports, supports everything I do, having uh, healthy children, um, you know, and it was just, it's been a crazy process because like two years ago, I lost, uh, lost a granddaughter at three months and a day old. And then a week later, my son, 30 years old, would have a major stroke and almost pass. Ugh. So it's just been one challenge after another. But I've always managed to find, you know, the things that will make me happy, right? And like being part of the same network, we know that gratitude is a huge thing for us, right? right? Finding those things we are grateful for, right? So if I'm constantly thinking about what I'm grateful for, even if tragedy strikes, I can still find those things that will make me happy, right? Like I was grateful that I wasn't out there doing drugs so I could help my mother, you know, before she passed. Monday nights were my nights with her and I'd spend the night and take care of her and hang out with her, right? You know, I was grateful that my siblings, you know, included me because for a long time there when I was in my active addiction, like nobody wanted me around, right? And uh, I just found that when I'm, I'm grateful, right, when I'm doing the, uh, the G code app and, you know, I, I have my own gratitude journal that I keep that I've been doing since I got sober since day one that, you know, it's very hard for me to get depressed anymore because, you know, I have people like you in my life that invite me to be on their podcast and, you know, share my message. So that's how fearless happiness came about. So what I did was I put my journey kind of like they say in layman's terms, so that anybody could use, that anybody could read my book, see the principles that I live by and, and get out of whatever challenge they're going through. Wow. That's a lot of stuff that happened uh, to you in your life and a lot of, a lot of tragedy, but you've, uh, you've come through it and now you're trying to help others. So you take, you're channeling all the stuff that you went through. And um, that's heavy duty, like a lot of loss, you know, and a lot of grief yeah. that you probably went through. Um, and I think that's um, what what people are. I think that's the, the the thing in life everybody wants. They just want to be happy, right? They're looking yeah. for happiness. They're looking for joy. And uh, some people find it through, or they think they find it through addiction to things. Right. Um. They think they take a vacation and everything's going to be great, but they just spend a lot of money and then they come back and then they're back in their situation. So right. it's just a patch. Uh, but really um, happiness, deep down happiness is just, I guess you just got to take a look at your life and uh, see what, what doesn't work for you, you know? 
<laughs> Absolutely. And make those tough decisions, you know, and, and, and surround yourself with people like we're, we're in apex and there's a lot of people that, um, you know, they have the G code and one of them is gratitude, right? Giving gratitude for where you are and what you have. Absolutely. You know, and, uh, it's just we, we, we don't look at that. We, we're not happy with what we have. We always want something else, right? But if you just right. stopped and just think about, look, I got, okay, like you and I are in a, a house, right? We're, we're, we're not living out of a cardboard box, <laughs> right? right? We have clothes. We're going to probably eat later, right? We got some food. Right. We exactly. got people around us. Uh, you have a wife, which is fantastic, and, and kids and, and the family. I mean, a lot of people don't have that stuff, and we take all that stuff for granted. Absolutely. And grandkids. So I'm really great. Grandkids too. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I get to be a grandfather. Wow. 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 That's cool. But, um, so, I mean, like what, are, I mean, like how do you, the people that come to you, I guess, what are, what are their, I mean, fearless, happy, not like what are their fears, I guess. And, and how do you, how do you guide them through their, their trauma and their, their angst and how do you get them out of it? You know? Or how do you how do you approach it? Like, do you, do you say, "Hey, look at what you have and and what you're not seeing," and I don't know. Right. Well, th there's the approach I use. Right. What I've taught as a as a substance abuse counselor is always meet someone where they're at. Right. I can't expect someone who say who's coming into treatment for drug addiction, right, to be happy and go lucky like I am because I've got 18 years. Right. So I got to meet them where they're at and figure out like where they're coming from. So depending on the issue, right? Like if it's a serious trauma, right? PTSD, say it's um, sexual abuse or whatever, right? There's only so much I can do because I'm not a licensed therapist, but I can gather, I can help them plant their feet where they're at, if that makes sense. What I do, because I know there's, I've worked with so many, right? And, and they're always like, I need this. I need to do this. I need to do that, right? They're not even thinking about where they're at for the moment, right? So sometimes I'll take them outside and like where I work, I have a beautiful view of the Canyon, right? So I'll tell them, I'll sit there and I'll have them look out and then I have them look where their feet are. And I said, where are you at right now? Right. So I, I try to ground them first to see, you know, they're not out on the streets, right. You know, like in your case in New York, where it could be freezing, you know, snow's coming. Mm -hmm. Right. And they got nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, I get a lot of clients that are out of state. So I'll say like, look where you're at right now. You know what I mean? You're one, like I like to call it, you're one, you're not at the gray bar motel. So that's a plus, mm. right? <laughs> you got this beautiful view, right? And I just to help them calm down and notice that, okay, everything is not all doom and gloom, but it takes work. Let me tell you, because, and even when I look back in my process of getting sober, I, you know, I kept thinking about, and even into long-term recovery, I always, I lived out of guilt and shame because of what I did not being there for my kids for nine years. Right. Because my addiction, my drugs and my alcohol were more important. So what I learned from that, you know, I would either stay stuck in the past. Right. And we know that you can't change the past. And I would live a lot of my life out of guilt and shame for the things I did. And uh, until I had someone, um, like sit me down and go, Max, look, you can't change the past, right? But what you do today can help you have a better future, right? Like my mentors, my sponsor, you know, people like Chris Whitehead, uh, people like in Apex, right? That I've had conversations with. And that's what I do. I've been doing that, you know, with my clients for a long, long time. I've been in the treatment industry for 13 years. Um, and it's just, you know, I have to... I have to be very aware of where they're coming from when I first meet with them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Empathy based up one of my value, core values is empathy, right? Uh, making sure that I put myself in someone else's shoe and not like overwhelm them with too much stuff. If that makes sense. Yeah. No, right. Definitely. Some sympathy, some, some compassion and definitely kindness um, and that's how I approach it. Right. I let them do the talking most of the time because it's funny. Right. But it's an hour session and I'll sit there and I said, okay, so I'll say, I'll grab my phone. Right. And I'll, I'll start doing this. 
like I'm like I'm texting, but I'm not really texting. And they'll go, hey, isn't this our session? I go, you give whatever. I said, this is your session. You can talk or not. And then all of a sudden stuff will start flowing out of their mouths. You know what I mean? Like yeah. when they want some. Right. And, and just making sure they're being heard and stuff like that. So that's how I approach it is just meeting them where they're at. Right. Mm-hmm. With a lot of love and compassion and empathy and then letting them direct their self direct where they want to go. If that makes sense. All right. Yeah. So I had somebody else on uh, about a year or maybe a little bit more ago and he, he, you know, he, he's involved in the church and, you know, he's a pastor and he said that the thing we, I do is I meet them where they're at. I go, to, I go to their level and I lift them up. That's what yep. he does. And yeah. I said, that makes a lot of sense. You know, you can't preach right. down to them. You have to be at their level and say, Hey, it's, it's okay. You know, well, let's go together and we go to that next level and, and try to lift them up um, Absolutely. and make them, uh, you know, make them realize what they're, uh, what they're thinking about. And a lot of people have thoughts that, um, you know, that, that, that just are unfounded and um, also forgiving yourself and also the past. Someone t- t- told me this to me. Um, it was great. Like God, I know God forgives me and I'm not greater than God so I can forgive myself. Right? Yeah, I can tell you another way to put it. Like my sponsor told me this when I relapsed the last time, right? He said, Hey Max, forgive yourself because God already has. Yeah. And I was like, you know what I mean? It was one of those things like, Oh, okay. I get it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's so, what I try to teach too. I try to teach my clients to forgive themselves first and foremost. And I said, for one, you're not a bad person. You're just a sick person trying to get well. Right. You didn't, you know, and I asked them, you didn't commit murder. Did you, you didn't do this. Did you? And they're like, no, I just did my drugs. And you know, I abandoned my family and I go, okay, so start forgiving yourself because you're here today and you're working on changing yourself. And they would, they're just kind of, I get these looks like sometimes like I'm talking a different language and then, but slowly it sinks in and they're going, okay, this guy, right. And, and in regards to empathy, right. When I can tell a client how they're feeling because I've been there before they even say anything, I got them. Yeah. I, they get it. You know what I mean? And then they start opening up to me, but until you can do that, then sometimes it's very difficult. No, I think and people call themselves coaches or, or people who help other people. If you haven't been there, you don't know what the hell they're thinking. <laughs> Right. right. People go out there and put themselves out and say, yeah, I can help you. And, and they, you know, maybe they've had a privileged life or whatever. I don't know. But I mean, right. you got to get you got to get down to their level. And the only way to do that is to be there. You know, like you've done, you've been there in the past. And um, and you see a lot of people that kind of just are, are kind of stuck, too, because of events in the past. Right. A lot of people. Um, yeah fear of you know looking at the past and then thinking that it's going to happen again it's just going to happen again things are not going to go my way things are going to be negative and then when you're in that mindset things will be negative right i mean you got to get you got to get past that and be positive what what have you seen it's it's the same thing you know um you know i let me use an example that i i saw firsthand i saw this after a meeting one time right so i saw one guy, my friend who was sponsoring my other friend and my friend was all worked up and anxious. Right. And, and his sponsor's like, yo, just slow down, like slow down, stop, stop. And he's like, you know, he's very like just all over the place. And he goes, what are you afraid of? He asked him that question. What are you afraid of? And the best answer I ever heard, you know, so my, my friend said, well, I'm afraid it's not going to turn out the way I want it to. And the, my friend, my other friend said, it probably won't. <laughs> it probably won't. He goes, but if you work your steps or, you know, in that case, if you do these things that we do, it'll probably turn out better than you could have ever hoped for. So quit stressing and just start doing the work. And you know, and I know we hear that every day or we <laughs> see it in a post. Do right? the damn work. I do <laughs> the damn work. Right. And that's what I tell my clients, Yeah, you know, and for example, so I had this, I worked at a big place in Huntington Beach. And I get a call, you know, from my boss saying, hey, you got a new client. They're over at the detox house, you know, just go check on them and introduce yourself, which I always did anyway. And I go, sure. So I went over there. Right. And my reputation kind of preceded me. 
So I went over there. I walked in the room and said his name. Hey, how you doing? And he says, hey, Max, I am not fucking doing the steps. I said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I go, that's fine. I said, I just came to check on you to see how you were doing. And he goes, I still, I'm not doing the steps. I said, hey, I'm not asking you to do anything right now except to get well so we can get to work. And, you know, I interviewed, we were cool and he ended up doing really well. Right. So when he turned a year sober, I, I had just, I think I had left the place. I get a message. And he said, Hey, Max, I got a sponsor and I worked the steps. And guess what? I got my private uh, pilot's license. Now I'm working on cre- I'm getting my commercial pilot's license. Wow. Yeah. So this guy was, you know, doing all kinds of crazy stuff from like, you know, you see, I don't know, like people who are hungover, right? You, they look like death warmed over, right? When I walked yeah. in that room and now, you know, he, I think he's two years sober now and who knows, he may have his commercial license, but those are the, like, that's the gift I get when I meet someone where they're at, like where I don't try to push something down their throat. And I just said, Hey, look, I'm here. My name is Max. When you're ready, let's talk. You know what I mean? And, but people know, like, that's my foundation have been the 12 steps of AA, right? Do I think everybody needs it? Possibly. Do I push it on everybody? Absolutely not. Because recovery looks different for, ev- you know, everybody's an individual. And what it, it looks different, right? So whatever, say, Michael wants to do it this way, that's how I'm going to support you. Michael came up with this way he wants to do his recovery. So, okay, let's do it that way. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't say, Michael, you have to do the 12 steps. You're going to die. I used to be like that way back in the beginning. Oh, but, yeah. You know, I've learned over time that people are individuals and they're going to figure out what works best for them. And that's, that's all I do is just guide them in, into doing what they think they need to do. Well, that's great. I mean, you know, and it must be very fulfilling. Like you're trying to, you're helping a person, you know, get them out of a, a state of mind and, and an addiction. And then you see them getting a, a pilot's license, my God. Right. Yeah. And they're clean. I mean, it's very fulfilling. It's a very good job or not a job, but a kind of a way of life actually, you know, Yep. It, it's a way of life. And uh, a lot of people can't say that about what they do. They're miserable. Right. But you're, but you're doing some good stuff. Thank you, sir. You know, I think that's uh, fantastic, you know. So um, we're going to try to wind it down. But what what would you say, I guess, to somebody who, I guess you, you, you were, you kind of focus in on, I guess, addiction on, with people? Or, or is it some other uh, other things? What, what are some of the other things? So anxiety, depression, right? Because I suffer from clinical depression, but I haven't been on any medication for quite a long time now. Um, PTSD, right? Um, I may not how, know how to, like, how I, because we all, some of us, most of us have our own form of PTSD. If you think about it, some event in our life happened that was just overwhelming to our brain. If you know what I mean, whether it's like I told you earlier, deaths in the family or witnessing an accident or some whatever. Right. And some people like veterans that I help, right. I maybe not do the, the, the therapeutic, the therapy stuff, but I can help them by, I like to say being their biggest advocate or their biggest encourager, if that makes sense. Yeah. Another story, right. And I had a vet that I worked with that had severe PTSD from being an Afghan and uh, Iran, Iraq um, veteran. Right. And saw some things that most people don't see. Oh God. And um, you know, I kept pushing them, but like not hard, right. Not, not like the little kick in the butt, but it was like a little nudge. Hey dude, I know this stuff works. You should go try this EMDR therapy. You know, it's, it's specific for PTSD and people that have severe trauma like yourself. And for a long time, he fought it. Right. So, well, that gentleman ended up doing good. He called me when he was two years sober. And here's one of the gifts, like you said, that just, you can't put a price on, right? He says, Hey, Max, I'm two years sober. I just wanted to thank you for always pushing me to do that therapy. He goes, I can actually sleep at night now. Wow. You know what I mean? And that's like, you can't put a price on that. And I didn't do anything except like hold space for him, encourage him and let him know that, you know, that's okay. It doesn't make you any less of a man actually makes you more of a man. It makes you very courageous for stepping outside your comfort zone. And that's what I would tell him. I go, yeah, I go, you can go through boot camp and you can go through Iraq and Afghanistan, 
Afghanistan. I said, you can do this. And that's how I would encourage him. And he'd go, nah, I'm not going to do it. I don't believe in it, you know, and then he did it. And then, you know, I get that call. So, you know, that's, that's, I think I just call myself the biggest encourager on the face of the planet. Right. Mm. <laughs> Cause that's, that's how I work with my clients. I just encourage them to take that next step. Even if it's a half step, as long as they're moving forward, that's what they need to do. Right. That's what we all need to do is keep moving forward every day. And people need help. You know, they try to do it on their own, but they need help. People right. like, well, business, you need a coach. If you got issues, you know, you think about stuff and it's troubling you. You got to talk to somebody, you know, get out there and talk to somebody, anybody. Right. But if you really want to fix it, you know, if you really want to fix it, you should hire somebody like you or get involved with somebody like you who who has the techniques and, and kind of push them in the right direction. You can analyze them. And, yeah. and, you know, the guy could sleep at night. Jesus. Right. Yeah. What kind right. of stuff did he see? Like, like, I, I don't know. Like, I, my God. <laughs> like, so okay. So, <laughs> um, so for instance, without giving up who he is, right. So he's telling, he felt very, cause I was a felt, I'm a, I'm a veteran myself. So he felt very comfortable in telling me, even though I'm not a combat vet. Right. Oh, wow. So in our sessions, he would talk about the things that would keep him up that he would see in his night as they call them night terrors, right? Which he saw in real life. He goes, Max, I've seen babies killed. I've seen mm. kids. I've seen my friends, you know, blown up and all that. You know what I mean? It's all that stuff that we they see in war. I can't say that I've seen it, but, you know, I have a lot of friends who are Iraq and Afghanistan vets. And um, yeah, he would just share, you know, and, and that's what kept him up. He goes, dude, I, I probably haven't slept since I got out of the army, since I got, you know, and what he found was he started self-medicating so he could try to sleep. But then he said that stuff stopped working. But, you know, as far as I know, he's coming up on three or if not three years clean and sober now and he can sleep at night. Right. So, you know, if there's something that I can't help somebody with, I will always direct them in the direction that they need to go so they can find that help. Yeah. Right. So like if I'm coaching someone in regards to addiction, right. There's, there's more things I can help them with besides just going, Hey, you need to go to meetings. You know what I mean? I can, this, I, I give them real life experiences, stuff I did outside of meetings that helped me stay sober. So, you know, whether I'm working with an executive, a high performer or a CEO and, and see, I target the families too, because a lot of the times they get left out in the cold, right? Okay. My friend, you know, my, my husband is going and getting treatment, but what do I do now? Right. So I educate the families on how they can best support not only their loved one, but how they can take care of themselves too. Right. Cause they're affected too by this whole thing. Absolutely. And yeah. that's something I really it. didn't even think about. I mean, you know, you have the person you're treating, but what about the family that's just been through this trauma and they see right. this guy falling apart or woman falling apart and they're like, they're ripped up. They don't know how to handle it. So they, they, they that's fantastic. Yep. Wow. And you were, you served, you said you were veteran. Yeah, I served in the, you, I was a United States Navy from 86 to awesome. 89. Thank you for your service. That's awesome. And you know what? People should be gratitude because you got like guys like you and the guy that was see, saw babies being blown up. They don't realize how good they have it here, you know? And then they criticize these guys and defund police and all this crap that's out there, which is garbage. And these people should wake up and understand that their their freedom is because of guys like you and him. You know, absolutely. You know, absolutely. it's disgusting. I, I I don't want to get started on that. We're talking about <laughs> I know we'll do that's a, a part whole other two. podcast. <laughs> I, know, I always start ranting, and I got I got to stop. I got to stop. So okay, great. Hey. This is awesome. If people want to get a hold of you, how do they do that? All right. So if you want to get a hold of me, you can message me on Facebook. Uh, I'm on Instagram, uh, LinkedIn. Um, what other ones? Maybe spell so, your uh, name again or what? what is it? Yeah. So if you want to find me, it's Max, M-A-X. Last name is spelled N-I-J-S-T. Uh, so you can find me on Facebook. Um, I have a free group. Uh, it's people from all different kinds of be uh, businesses, backgrounds, cultures, right? So uh, that group is there to bring people together and create connections so they can overcome their challenges and um, become fearlessly happy or fearless happiness. Uh, and that's the same name as my book, Fearless Happiness. And yeah, that's about it. 
You gonna I do, do Twitter, but not so often. You going to do any more speaking? I guess because of COVID, you were mentioning that that kind of stopped. And yeah, I'm hoping to speak. Um, I, I'm I'm revamping and rebuilding a website, so I will have that too. Um, I'll let you know as soon as that happens. Um, but I am going to have a new website and kind of rebranding myself so I can get out there and speak. I'm going to link my podcast. I have a podcast too. If you want to listen to my podcast, oh, wow. it's called the fearless happiness podcast. Cool. It's on all the major, uh, platforms and yeah, that's how, and hopefully 220, well, not hopefully 222, 2022 is going to be our year, Michael, for all of us. I think so. We should go you know on I mean? tour. I think I'm going to go on tour with you. We'll speak to people. Like I want yeah, to do that. I got do my it. book. I got my manuscript. I'm getting it out. It's done. Yeah. I've decided. It. It's one of my goals for 2022. It was 2021, but it didn't happen. But 2022, is, it's happening. And then the, the speaking too. I think uh, I'm jumping into that too because I think there's a lot of people that need help. There's a lot of fear that's out there. It's, it's exactly. horrible, horrible, horrible. And a lot of people need help with that. Absolutely. And that's what we're here there for, right, Michael? I mean, like, I got to tell the audience. So that's what I'm here for is to help you through any challenge, right? To let you know that yeah. you're not alone. There's people out there that have struggled just like you. So all you got to do. So like I said, if you need to get a hold of me, DM me. I'll answer any questions yeah. that I can and we'll go from there. That's fantastic. And if you want to get a hold of me, I'm Michael at crushingyourfear.com. Uh, I can connect you with uh, Max. Uh, or if you just want to shoot the uh, stuff, we can talk about whatever you want. And um, Max, I appreciate you coming on today. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me as a guest. No, thank you. And and if uh, you guys out there, if you appreciate this uh, podcast, if you think somebody can benefit from it, please share it with them. Uh, subscribe. Five stars. Everything is okay. And, uh, you know, I, I hope you guys uh, have a great day. And, and just whatever fear you got, you know, you got to crush it. You got to talk to somebody about it and try to yep. try to get, get that out, get that out because it doesn't serve you. It doesn't help you. It just holds you back. All right, cool. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Max. Thank you, sir.